Hi everybody, I'm Tim from TroutandFeather.com, but today is not a Trout and Feather day. This is an Orvis and Tom Rosenbauer day. We have spent two days in Vermont. Now he's here all the time. For me, I'm coming from Pennsylvania. We did some brook trout fishing yesterday. We had a blast. You're probably looking at some of the footage right now. Thanks for showing me that. Oh, it was fun. Thanks for getting. Thanks for uh, giving me an excuse to play. It was a good day of work. <laughs> yeah, it was a great was day of great work. Day of work. I missed a few too many fish, you know, <laughs> that's another video. So instead we're gonna pick Tom's brain on some fly tying materials because we both love the tie flies. Like that's just, it's connected with fly fishing. But if we had to break down some of our favorite materials, let's pick his brain and find out. Stay tuned. All right, without any further ado, Tom, give us some of your favorite fly tying materials. Oh, uh, let's see. Well, first thing that comes to mind is EP fiber, because I use it for everything. I use it for spinner wings, for emergers, for saltwater flies. I mean, I just love EP fiber. Okay. So that's that's a biggie with me. So and do then, you cheat with it? Do you use like your like X caddis now, or a lot of your old deer hair flies now with yeah. EP fibers? No, not really. But things like chubby Chernobyls, and you know, I uh, for little tiny. Uh, uh, sparkle duns, I'll, I'll make the wing out of that yeah. instead of deer hair okay. Okay. because it's so much easier to work with. And the fly we used yesterday, what was that fly called? Uh, that was the Rosenhopper. All right, we used this Rosenhopper. I'm guessing it had some EP fiber it on it. It did, for the wing, yep. And just to tell people, like, this thing floated really well. Will you talk about, like, the, the process you used to help the EP fiber float? Uh, well, sometimes I double dip. <laughs> so I dip it in uh, Orvis fly dip, which is a liquid, and then I run it through the powder. Okay. And the double dip, the keeps double dip, it, the double it. dip keeps yeah. it floating. Pre-treat the fibers or anything ahead of time? Or I don't know. I don't water do spray. that. I'm not organizing them. All right. So number one, EP fibers. Yeah, EP fibers. All right. Let's keep rolling. What else we got? Uh, Sochi rabbit's foot. Oh yeah. Yeah. I like it for wings on caddis flies and small mayflies and uh, emergers. Yeah. Okay. So we're talking mainly dry flies, emergers. Yeah. Do you ever use it on nymphs or I don't use it on nymphs no. or streamers? That no, I think. I don't. I don't use it on. It's not long enough for streamers, so. And I know I can refer my audience back to, there's a video I tied of your snowshoe emerger. Mm -hmm, yep. the Rosenbauer, what's it? Is it just called the snowshoe emerger? Rabbit's foot emerger. Don't, don't look at my video. I'll see if I can find one of Tom tying it. I mean, that seems to be like one of your go-to materials for sure. Yeah. It's almost yeah. like there's a, a magic quality about yeah, it. I, I don't yeah. know what it is. It's just nice to work with. It's yeah. easy to work with. Unlike deer here, it compresses so you don't have a lot of bulk and it floats pretty well. I think it's more the, I think it's more the, the, the impression that it gives of something unfolding and emerging. It floats okay, but yeah. it's not, it's not it's as not, great as deer hair no. for floating. I guess the one one question I have, because I know there's so many fly tires out there. Whenever you look at this snowshoe, the foot, yeah. where do you like to clip from? It depends, you know, they, they vary just like a piece of deer hair. So sometimes I'll go, go to the toe and sometimes I'll go to the heel or the middle. Okay. You have to look at each foot because they're all, you know, it's natural material, so they're okay. all a little bit different. All right, so what I'm hearing is when you get to Orvis, which by the way, we're outside the flagship store right now. When you go to the fly tying section, pull them all off the shelf, look at each one of them. I know, I know, I do that. I don't think they have any snowshoe rabbit Oh no, rabbit we're going to go no. in there and yell at them. No, they don't. Be, it's been tough to get yeah, recently. Been. Now, I know you love to fly fish in the fall, but don't forget, like this video so I can make more videos like this. Now, let's get back to some more tips. All right, what do you got next? Uh, pheasant tail. You know, it's magic. Everybody believes it's magic, and there's just something about pheasant tail that that attracts fish. I don't know what. The little fibers or the color or yeah. whatever. It just works. It always does. Yeah. It just works. Uh, are you more of a natural pheasant tail kind of guy? Do you like the dyed stuff? Anything? I use the dyed stuff, but honestly, it doesn't seem to work as well, and okay. I'm not sure why. Uh, so I, I use the net, usually the natural color. If, if, if it's a darker fly, I will use like dyed black or dyed olive. Yeah. But. I'm with you. I have some olive pheasant tail and I don't use it as much. I, I just yeah. want to turn to the natural. Yeah. I will say one of my sneaky patterns that I learned from Pat Weiss, uh, he lives in Pennsylvania as well, he uses bleached pheasant tail. Mm -hmm. And there's something about that bleached fiber. It just, uh -huh. it, it, you still have the little the little movements, you have the undulations yep. of the fibers, yep. but just that, that lighter shade just seems to really work, especially PMD, sulfur waters, yeah. K hills, just yeah. it really seems to do well. Okay. I want to try that. What about whenever you're tying with it, you want to protect it? Do you like to counter rib a wire? Do you just go straight pheasant tail? Do you put super glue underneath? Do you have any tips there? Or is it just. I just put it? wire around it and I don't even counter rib it. Yeah. 
because uh, I, I forget how to do it. <laughs> you don't forget, <laughs> no. Well, I just put wire over okay. it. That's all. Nice I, I will twist the fibers before I wind them. Okay. You know, twist them. So you'll take them, lock them in place, and twist them. Twist and them, yeah. And a good idea would be to do them in a loop, you know, like yeah. a dubbing loop. But dubbing loops are... Take a another little another step. Yeah, they yeah. take another step. Yeah, another step. I think we're hearing it's like down and dirty and simple. Yeah, yeah. I like that. Yeah. All right, time out. Before we go any further, I better like introduce Tom Rosenbauer. Now, I'm sure most of you watching probably know all about Tom. He's been doing this for over 40 years. 45 with Orvis, and then when I was in high school and college, I worked in fly shops. So, oh my God. Yeah, so long time. Yeah, so nearly more than five decades, we're saying. 45 with Orvis all over the place. Uh, he's what, what I call just somebody that all of us look up to. You, you can call him a role model. You call him whatever you want. He's an ambassador for Orvis, but in my mind, he's just the ambassador for fly fishing. So first but now all, that you fish with me, do you still look yes, up to Yes, he's great. He is great. He was all over me. I he kept. No, 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 no. I'll, no. I'll tell some stories later. Not no, in this we video. were neck and neck. No, we, we had a great neck. time fishing, but he is truly just that person who wants to educate a little bit of humor in there while he's doing it. It gets that entertainment going, so I love that. But let's also kind of direct people to some of the resources that you offer because you really help so many people out there. If you were going to pick a few resources for, for people to try out, a couple areas where they can see you and they can learn a little bit more about what you offer fly fishing. Well, the Orvis Learning Center, it's all a video-based learning center. and A lot of it's very, very basic and it covers everything from striped bass to bonefish to lots of trout, uh, bass, a lot of bass stuff. So, yeah. um, you know, it's all video based. It's the way people want to learn these days. Sure, obviously. sure. We're so, doing it now. Yeah. So um, there's, there's the Orvis Learning Center and then my podcast, I, the uh, Orvis Fly Fishing Podcast. Um, it's amazing. I never thought that that would be an effective teaching tool, but people tell me, tell me all the time that they've learned so much and it's helped their fishing and it blows me away because it's just audio right it's <laughs> like it's fly fishing is so it visual it's a great podcast but, you have a great voice for it but well, I, I guess it, it works. your format's nice too i'm hoping many of you have listened to his podcast if you haven't the, the format's great because kind of a little intro then goes into this thing called the fly box yeah where people will send in voice clips or write an email asking tom a question he'll answer them now i'll do my own little time out this is like my way that i aspire to be like tom Whenever I listen to the podcast, I will pause it before he answers, and I will give my answer and see if it matches up with oh, what a lot of Tom do says. That. I want to yeah, know, like, yeah. do, do I do Tom and me agree? Yeah. And he always throws in that extra, like, <laughs> he enhances it like one step more than me every time. I'll get there. But then he always has a guest mm. on as well, so it's great to just see that. You know, I've been a guest a couple times, and Tom doesn't want just the the general. We're going to talk fly time. It's like let's really niche it down. Let's find a topic that will interest people not something that you can just find on any website but i really appreciate you doing that it's and, fun yeah it's fun i learn i learn a ton oh from i'm those sure too, i'm sure because i have great guests yeah so. and then speaking of fun you also do something on facebook facebook lives now can you talk a little bit about those yeah every monday most mondays unless i'm traveling i do a live uh, fly tying pattern and uh, people can come on and ask questions as we're doing it so yeah. it's interactive and it's fun they tease me and and we have kind of a regular crowd you know um and then once a month i have a tie off with the great tim flagler and people get to vote at the end on who tied the better fly usually he wins no this was a good almost week. always this he was wins. a good week i won this week he yeah, won two won days ago week. he was like I'm, all excited but it was my own pattern it was a frozen <laughs> you better win that well, yeah i better win that one uh, so i think it was a sympathy vote no me. no no i don't think so <laughs> Well, listen, those are three great ways. I will put links down in the description so you can connect with those. But by all means, check out the stuff that Tom is doing. It is absolutely top notch. And it's all free. Even it's better. Free. Even better. <laughs> Let's get back to the fly tying materials. Tom and I had just like a little conversation already. What's the next material? Hair's ear. Hair's ear, you know, and, and Jim Flagler teases me because he says I shave rabbit's ears and yes I do <laughs> I actually make my own hairs ear because I can customize it uh, I can make it a light blend or a dark blend yeah. but I, I do make my own hairs ear put Absolutely. it in a blender and yeah. mix it up and, yeah. Yeah. that was that was one of the biggest things I wanted to share in my book was I wanted people to know that the hairs ears that I use for like my waltz worms it's different than everybody else I want my fly to look just a little bit different mm -hmm. and I achieve that by blending it in, yeah. a, in an old coffee bean grinder yep. I'm with you 100% hairs ear is just one of those things and customizing it just makes a big difference yeah now what do you use to blend yours coffee coffee grinder. bean as well okay. and when I first got married I knew that she was going to be a keeper because 
she saw me mixing hair's ear in. It was an older, it was an old blender, but she didn't know that. And she said, is that the one we make coffee with every day? And I said, yeah. <laughs> and she said, oh, okay. She said, okay. But it wasn't. Uh, I would hope not. No, no I, it wasn't. And wasn't. she went with it. Yeah, she went with she it. She went with yeah, it. I was, was a keeper. Yeah. Okay. All right, one of Tom Rosenbauer's favorite fly tying materials is? Crystal Flash. Crystal Flash. Yeah. Crystal Flash. Now, what do you use it for? Well, I use it for a lot of things. I use it, I put a couple strands in uh, spinner wings to give it a little sparkle. And I obviously use it for streamers, uh, saltwater flies. I believe that you need to be very subtle and sometimes just a couple strands. You, know, okay. you don't want to, you don't want to really yeah, load it on yeah. there. Just a little bit, just a little bit of crystal flesh. Yeah, I've used it for tails and, and uh, legs on nymphs okay. before, and it works pretty well. Just one of those uh, overlay, you know, overlays on nymph cases. Just all, all kinds of stuff. Um, I know somebody's going to ask down in the comments. Favorite colors of crystal flash? If you had to pick a few, you know, I almost invariably are using just the pearl. Okay. You know, the, yep. the pearl uh, crystal flash. Okay, that's perfect. So we got five materials. Some of Tom Rosenbauer's favorite fly tying materials. Now, for all of you, kind of pause before we wrap this up. Go down below. Let's see how your list compares with Tom. Drop it down in the comments. And if you want to post any of this stuff on, I don't know, Instagram. Let's just use the, the hashtag. Go hashtag Trout and Feather. Tell us some of your favorite materials. Tag Tom and me so we can read along just for the fun. And you know, I'm not gonna give you mine yet. I'll give you mine at another date. But it's gonna be all the, but what about, but what about, but what about, but what, every, anytime you give a list. Yeah. Right? But what about, what about? And we know, we left about 500 fly tying materials <laughs> off the list. That's okay. These are just some favorites. All right, well, let's wrap this up. Tom, thank you so much for coming on. Tim, it's been so much I fun. I appreciate it. Yeah. I hope to have you on again. And for all of you watching at home, thank you so much. If you want to connect with Tom, I know he's on Instagram. They can connect with you. Yeah. Any other way? Uh, podcast at Orvis.com. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much for all of you watching. Tom, one more time, thanks. Thank you, Tim. He caught it. We'll see all of you soon. It's not over yet. I took all the flies and the information that Tom and I talked about, and I put it together in a playlist just for all of you. Click here to access it. You can thank me later.